tenth Sunday after Pentecost, morning meditation, August first, two thousand twenty-one. Meditations are taken from meditations and readings for every day of the year, from Saint Alphonsus the Go- Meditations readings for every day of the year by Saint Alphonsus de Liguori, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. First choice is teacher in moral theology. Act of faith in the presence of God. In nomine Patri, Fili, Spiritu Sancti. Amen. Most holy, adorable, and undivided Trinity, one God and three persons, I believe that thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility, and render to thee with my whole heart the homage which is due to thy sovereign majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. O blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and my mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. St. Alphonsus de Liguori, pray for us. Christian soul, reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify, one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon, one life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, Virtues to acquire, one heaven to win. Act of humility, litany of humility. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being culminated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected, deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ask for your guidance in this our evening medita- morning meditation through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary, ever Virgin. Ave Maria, gratia plena Dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, and benedictus fructus ventris tui Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mata Dei, or Pernois Peccatoribus. Nuc in hora mortis nostre. Amen. In honor of St. Joseph, our guardian angel, and all the saints, we pray, Gloria Patria, et Filio, et Spirit de Sancto, Secret Eric in Principio, Nuc et Semper, and in Secula Seculorum. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and it shall be created. Shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost. Grant in that same spirit that we may be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Morning Meditation. Patience hath a perfect work. How is it possible for him who looks at the crucifix and beholds a God dying in a sea of sorrows and insults, how is it possible for him, if he loves that God, not to suffer with cheerfulness? Yea, how is it even possible not to desire to suffer every pain for Jesus' sake? 
Love makes all things easy. O oh God, how is it possible for him who looks at the crucifix and beholds a God dying in the sea of sorrows and insults, how, I say, is it possible for him, if he loves that God, not to suffer with cheerfulness? Yea, how is it even possible not to desire to suffer every pain for Jesus' sake? St. Mary Magdalene de Pazzi used to say, quote, The sharpest pains become sweet when we behold Jesus on the cross. Justice Lipsus once found himself greatly afflicted with pains. A certain person endeavored to encourage him to bear them with patience by placing before him the patience of the Stoics. But turning to the crucifix, he said, There is true patience. He meant to say that the example of God who once suffered so much for the love of us is sufficient to animate us to endure all pain for the love of him. The ignominy of the cross, says St. Bernard, is agreeable to him who is not ungrateful to a crucified God. To him who loves his crucified Savior, pains and opprobrium are agreeable. When St. Eleazar was asked by his virgin spouse, St. Aphra, how he could submit to so many insults from the rabble without seeking revenge, he said, My spouse, think not that I am insensible to these insults. I feel them keenly. But I turn to Jesus on the cross and continue to look at him till my soul becomes tranquil. Love, says St. Augustine, makes all things easy. After being wooed with divine love, St. Catherine of Genoa used to say that she knew not what it was to suffer. Although she endured the most grievous pains, she felt none of them, because she regarded them as sent by him who loved her so tenderly. Thus also a good religious of the Society of Jesus, when God visited him with any pain, sickness, or persecution, used to say within himself, quote, Tell me, O pain, sickness, or persecution, who sends thee? Does God send thee? Welcome, welcome. Thus he was always at peace. Since, therefore, in this life we must suffer either cheerfully or with reluctance, let us endeavor to suffer with merit, that is, with patience. Patience is a shield that defends us against all the pains arising from persecutions, infirmities, losses, and other afflictions. He who is not this shield has to bear all these pains. Let us then, in the first place, ask this patience of God. Without asking it, we shall never obtain this great gift. When afflictions come upon us, let us be careful to do violence to ourselves, not to break out in the words of impatience or complaint. The fire that burns in a vessel is soon extinguished when the vessel is closed. Quote, to him that overcometh I will give the hidden manna. Apocalypse 2, verse 17. When a person does violence to conquer himself in adversity by instantly embracing the cross that God sends him, oh, what a sweetness does the Lord not make him afterwards experienced in the very tribulation he suffers. A sweetness wholly hidden from men of the world but well known to the souls that love God. St. Augustine used to say that to enjoy a good conscience in the midst of afflictions is sweeter than to live with a guilty conscience in the midst of delights. Speaking of herself, St. Teresa said, I have several times experienced that when I generally, generously resolve to do an act, God instantly makes the performance of it pleasant to me. He wishes the soul to feel these terrors in the beginning that she may have greater merit. Spiritual reading, the doctor and apostle of prayer, St. Alphonsus. When once his congregation was approved, Alphonsus gave himself up with greater ardor than ever to the impulses of his burning zeal. From this time we see him extending so wildly the sphere of his labors that his boundless activity has won for him the admiration of all successive ages. In addition to the cares which now weighed upon him more heavily than ever, owing to the increase and extensions of his institute, in addition to the anxieties and fatigues occasioned by his persevering stewardously in the work of the missions, Alphonsus now began to publish that long series of works, both theological and ascetical, by which he merited the glorious title of Doctor of the Church. His fame rests principally on his moral theology, and as a teacher of morals, he occupies indisputably the foremost place. It was the charity of Christ and zeal for souls that constantly urged on this holy man. Hence, no amount of work, no pains of sickness, however severe, could hinder him from publishing one or another book, sometimes even many every year, 
and this he continued to do even when burdened by the heavy cares of his Episcopal office. If we look for an explanation of this marvelous activity, we shall find in it the heroic vow by which this extraordinary man bound himself for the love of Jesus. This vow is recorded in the bull of his canonization in the following terms, quote, In order that he might consecrate himself in all his actions to the service of God, he bound himself by an arduous and almost unheard of vow never to waste the smallest portion of his time in idleness but to be perpetually engaged in some useful occupation. Unquote. Certainly we cannot but wonder that anyone should venture to make a promise so unlimited. It occasioned the defender of the cause of his beatification to exclaim in astonishment, O wondrous vow to which eternal praises are due, a heroic act unknown till now that reveals to us the sanctity of Alphonsus. Unquote. It is very probable indeed that Alphonsus took this vow from the very commencement of his congregation. But since he lived for more than 50 years from that time, what must have been the vigilance necessary to observe so heroic a resolution for so long a period? And now, before we proceed further in our narration of the saint's life, we will delay for a few moments in order to speak of the virtues which he practiced in so perfect a manner as we mentioned before, the chief virtue of St. Alphonsus was his burning love for Jesus Christ. This virtue was, as it were, the root from which sprung all his other virtues. It was the motive power of all his actions. Since he was pressed by the charity of Christ, he fled even from the shadow of sin as far the, as from the face of a serpent. Quote, rather, he used to say, would I be plunged alive into a cauldron of boiling oil than commit even one mortal sin? And I would suffer my head to be cut off sooner than to tell a willful lie. Unquote. The words and actions of Jesus Christ formed the unceasing subject of his contemplation. Yet there were three mysteries of this divine life that he loved to dwell upon with a special affection, the incarnation of the divine word, his passion and death, and that immense love which moved him to become a surgeoner on our altars, even to the end of time. In meditating on these mysteries, he nourished his soul with a food of heavenly sweetness. They form the usual su subjects of his sermons. And he explained them with such unction that he seemed to be an angel rather than a man. In order to communicate to others the piety that inflamed his own heart, he published many books written in a strain that is truly seraphic. Among these best known is that golden work entitled Visits to the Blessed Sacrament. When Alphonsus thought of the number of souls who offend our divine Lord by their sins and who either treat him with complete indifference or with cold respect, he would exclaim in bitter grief, Poor Jesus Christ! Poor Jesus Christ. And it was this compassion for his outraged Savior that urged him to undertake so many labors for the salvation of souls. There was perhaps no saint more fully understood or more constantly insistent on that urgent command of our Lord Jesus Christ, quote, that we ought always to pray and not to faint, unquote. Alphonsus himself used to pray to God without ceasing, and he never wearied of exhorting the faithful to make use of the weapon of prayer in all dangers, both of soul and body. He published on the subject his celebrated treatise entitled Prayer, the Great Means of Salvation. And hence, he has been styled the Apostle of Prayer. From this unwearied spirit of prayer and from his singular devotion for Jesus, there sprung his boundless and truly extraordinary devotion to the Virgin Mother of God. It would indeed be difficult to describe the greatness of his love for this best of mothers. During the whole course of his life, he had nothing more at heart than to preach and prepare himself for her feasts by redoubling his prayers and penances. Every Saturday, he fasted on bread and water in honor of his beloved mother. His actions were all commenced and ended with the Hail Mary. No day was allowed to pass without the recitation of a third part of the rosary to which he bound himself by vow. He also had made a vow to preach every Saturday in honor of the Blessed Virgin. When he spoke of his dearly beloved queen, it was evident that his burning words proceeded from a heart burning with love. And since these marks of affection for the Holy Virgin seemed insufficient to him, he wrote a book on the 
quote-unquote glories of Mary, of which every page and every line breathes the tenderness, tenderest devotion and love. As the bull of his canonization declares, quote, towards the Blessed Virgin, whom he regarded as his mother, he cherished the most singular devotion, unquote. Such was Alphonsus, whom Jesus Christ gave to his church, as founder of the congregation of the Most Holy Redeemer. The saint had now reached his 66th year, and it is at this period of his life that he received a call from heaven to new cares and duties, namely those of the Episcopal office. Alphonsus, as a bishop, will be the subject of our next chapter. Concluding prayer, I give thee thanks, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for the light which thou now bestowest upon me. I make a firm purpose of my will, that I may, in uniformity with your divine will, O triumph God, keep my resolutions and keep them well, for the love of thee and thy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that through her intercession I may receive by her loving hands the grace to be ever faithful, to my resolutions, my state in life and rule of life, now until the hour of my death. I give thee thanks, O God, for the patience with which thou hast hitherto borne with me. I see that although I forgot thee, thou didst not forget me. I am sorry, my sovereign good, for having turned my back upon thee, and I am now resolved to give myself entirely to thee. And why should I delay? That thou mayest abandon me, and that death may find me as miserable and ungrateful as I've been even until now? No, my God, I will no more offend thee, but will love thee. I love thee, O infinite goodness. Give me perseverance and thy holy love. I ask for nothing more. Mary, refuge of sinners, intercede for all the holy souls in purgatory and for all poor sinners, particularly myself. In nomen patria filii, et spiritu sancti, amen. Have a blessed morning and day, O slaves of Mary.